Hey guys, it's Real Appalachia with Shane. And Melody. And today we're coming to you from a place, Son of Town or City. No. <laughs> Blountville, <laughs> Tennessee. Blountville, Tennessee. Rich in history. Rich in history, like this little building behind us. Yes. We'll start off here at the John Anderson, or the Anderson Townhouse, I guess it's called, right? Yes. It was built in 1792 and it held the first town commissioners of Blountville. Now it is the Traditional Appalachian Musical Heritage Association. So it's called, I guess it's Tamaha. I don't know how you yeah. pronounce that, but yeah. Yeah. And the Anderson Townhouse, it was, dates back to Colonel John Anderson, they say. They think they, think they could trace it back to him. And yes. I didn't, 1792, I knew he was pretty old. I didn't realize he was that old, did you? I don't think it's the same John Anderson. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. It has to be. There's only one John Anderson, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is where he started. This the... is Shane's singing moment here. <laughs> There's a little girl in our neighborhood. Her name is Charlotte Johnson, and she's really looking good. He does a good John Anderson. Oh, good. I had I had to do that. <laughs> I didn't even oh get to the chorus out. Just us <laughs> Well, let's get okay. on and look at this town. <laughs> well, what do you think? Let's go buy some. Go buy some. I think there's going to be some fireworks here today. Here, for, this is that just get hyped this video up if you look at this. It know. does, yeah. There'll be some fireworks today. Yeah. There's a lot of people from Virginia that come down here to. Yeah. I think it's probably the biggest um, firework place just across the Tennessee line, and they don't have as many regulations against fireworks as Virginia does, I guess. <laughs> no, and I think aren't they, they're outlawed in Virginia, aren't they? Like certain levels. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I always saw, like, uh, I think it's John, uh, Mountain City, maybe, or one of them has, like, a last chance fireworks or whatever. Oh, yeah. But here we go. We're heading down into Blountville, Tennessee, and it's this, I keep wanting to call, every time I always try to see if it's a city or a town, and that's what's funny about Blountville is it's neither. Yes. It is, in fact, the only Tennessee county seat to not be an incorporated city or town. Okay. Now, I've heard that that was because, political reasons, they didn't... Yeah, they, I, it may have, I know it's been discussed before, and I think either they disbanded or they never did form one to one. Mm -hmm. Kind of keep it kind of neutral. Huh. Yeah. Well, and it is the county seat of Sullivan County, Tennessee, yeah. by the way. It is. We'll be pulling up in the courthouse here in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Kind of a dreary day, though, isn't it? It is. It's just a little blunt will sign. Now, this is a really cute downtown area. It is. And there's so much history in Blountville. There's the Battle of Blountville, of course. That happened in the Civil War. And then there's a cannonball still in one of these places here. So yeah, hopefully, really if anything goes well, we'll be able to show that on camera here later. So stick around. Yes, you got to see that. And if I'm not mistaken, Appalachian Caverns is located. I know it's right down here, and I think that's technically Blountville. We won't go there today, but maybe yeah, they'll, they'll invite day. us to come. I'd like to go in there. I went in um, elementary school. I took my sons three or four years ago, and I loved well, I took my daughter last year. What am I talking about? I went there last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm getting confused with Bristol Cavern some, but I go to Appalachian now. Yeah, I've, I've been to both on a school trip, but it's been so long, I can't remember. So to the left is the courthouse, which you can see of it, and then we've got this log cabin. The camera's kind of... It's funky, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Comha? Headquarters. Oh, headquarters. Traditional, uh, traditional Appalachian music. So it's right up here where the Cannonball is. Oh, it's called the Cannonball House. How funny. We can't uh, make that any easier to find, can they? Yeah. We'll drop around here for just a second. And... Yeah, we got to show that. Yeah. Love all these old buildings and churches and oh, yeah. homes. It's very cool to see. Yeah, the name Blumpel, it's not like it's a new thing. It's been around for forever. It just was never a town or city. Yes, it's the town of Blunt. Well, I shouldn't say the town of Blumpful, but Blumpful was thought to be the location of an early frontier fort prior to official settlement of the town. Yeah. Ah, there I did it again. It's not a town. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to do. I always call everything a town, even I know. the city, so I have that same problem. Hey, they've got a Burger King. No. Yeah, our Burger King. Yep. 
I love cows. There's always a lot. Yeah. There's a justice center, too, in the courthouse. I've been in there a couple of times, not for good reasons, but... <laughs> <laughs> And also, come down here, there's an animal shelter that's down here. And I went in there trying to foster a dog, but it didn't work out. Aww. It didn't work out. Not my fault. It just wasn't meant to be. I guess not. No. Dogs are a lot of work. I know. I probably... He'll really book for them. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Consignment books. Christian books. So we should end up be going in the loop right here, and we'll do another one, and then we'll start stopping and taking a look around. There ain't not a, not a whole lot to Blumville. I mean, yeah. well, it's pretty spread out, but it's like there's not a whole lot that you're missing by not. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm used to just always seeing Blumville along um, volunteer, volunteer Parkway Yeah. because I always go that way to Johnson City, and so I didn't realize it's as big as it is, but the population is actually 3,074. Yeah. Well, and that's the last one that's shown. That was 2010, so it's been a little while, but the updated is not on here yet. Yeah. So. Well, it stays pretty steady. I don't, not a lot happens and not a lot goes away. Right. I've been down here. This bb and I used to cover that as one of my branches when I was district manager there, and it was, like, centrally located, so I stopped here many a time. Mm -hmm. And I managed a guy in... The late great Harrison James, I gotta mention his name. I love the guy. He worked um, he worked at the fire department here too. He volunteered. He loved being a firefighter. It's his pride and joy in life. That's awesome. Yeah. So we'll go up here and there's a little bit more government offices. But definitely the money thing here is the cannonball house and the log cabin and all that stuff, but we'll, we'll hop out and show that. Yes. You might be freezing your little buns off, but... I'll be all right. You ready for this? So, the town actually goes back to 1782, and it was made um, the county seat of Sullivan County in 1795. So, it's been a long, long, long time. Yes. As of 1830, the settlement had 209 residents, two churches, six stores, two taverns, 10 mechanics, one doctor, and one lawyer. That's pretty impressive for 1830. Heck yeah, it is. This is Blountville Boulevard. I might go down this way just a minute just to show you, but there's not a whole lot to see down that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the other road we were on, the other four lane, was the Tennessee Ernie Ford. And it, uh, of course, named after the great Tennessee Ernie Ford singer. I don't know what his affiliation was with Blumble necessarily, but he was his home places in Bristol. We ought to tour that one of these days. Hmm. It's still there to do. Here's the Blumble Middle School. Yeah, that's neat to see too. Did you know also that if Blumble was an incorporated town, it would qualify as the second oldest in Tennessee after Jonesboro? Really? Yes. Did not know that. Mm hmm. So. Tennessee, a lot of history. A lot of history, and it's very central to the, what they call the Tri-Cities here, Johnson City, yeah. Kingsport, and Bristol. And it's, well, I think if I had to work in like Johnson City or something, which is a nightmare because I hate the traffic in Johnson City, I would want to live in like Bluntville because I think it's a nice little place. I've looked to move here 150 times and I cannot ever find a place. It's, um, it is, I, I love it too. Cause something you run into. Exactly what you said. It's kind of a small town feel, even that sort of town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also right in the middle of all the action where you can get anywhere. Well, I don't know if men go to baby showers, but mm -hmm. at baby showers sometimes, like, um, you'll, what is it? Like, if you say the word baby, you, uh, you start out with all these little babies on a necklace or something. If you say the word baby, you have to give one of your babies away. <laughs> so That's we great. need to do that with uh, towns. Yeah. We'll wear little clips with little town symbols or That's something. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd have lost it today. We'd both be bankrupt right now. Wouldn't we? I know. Both be bankrupt. We'll go back one more time down this swoop and try to get a different angle of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And then we'll jump out and show you folks around. Yes. Blah. Oh. Blunt bull, and we'll talk about the Battle of Blunt Bull later. Yeah. It's a pretty blunt word, and as it comes out of your mouth, blunt. You know, blunt. Like, blunt. Blah. That school looks old. Yeah. Pretty. It goes pretty 
far back I guess. Yeah, if you keep going, like if you went to ride at this red light, you could end up a bunch of little small like farms and uh, you know communities that are out this way. And I'm sure they're very nice. They are very nice. I love it out there, but Sullivan County office is here, and then we'll try to make our left to back down this way. Uh -huh. I judge a place by Mexican restaurants, and they got two, so that's a good size. That's a good size town. Yeah, got two Mexican restaurants. Yeah, there you go. And I judge a Mexican restaurant by their salsa. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I'll wait till it down for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah if their salsa, salsa yeah. is good, then the food's going to be good. Do you want a spicy salsa or? I like it spicy. Okay. But as long as it has some flavor. Some's just like water, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just want to get your perspective. Yeah, I get you. So we'll stop up here just a minute and take a look around at all some of this stuff that we can mm -hmm. see just how tough Melody really is. Yes. I think I'm pretty tough. Okay. Don't do that, don't we? Hop out and shut the courthouse and then we'll walk around some. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, as we mentioned in the vehicle just a minute ago about the Battle of Blanco. So it took place here September 22nd, 1863. Confederate forces commanded by Colonel James E. Carter fought a Union Brigade led by Colonel John W. Foster. And yes. they, the Confederates del delayed the Union advance for more than four hours. Uh, Carter withdrew under Zollicoffer, now known as Bluff City. That's a cool, yeah. that's a cool name. I'm sure it was probably <laughs> named after Felix Zollicoffer. There was a guy in the Civil War named that, but yeah. Okay. But uh, that's where they, Carter withdrew toward Zollicoffer, which is now Bluff City. A yes. less interesting name, but yes. not bad. And during the battle, artil artillery shells. I cannot talk today. Well, it's, oh my it's so gosh. cold out here. My mouth is froze shut. <laughs> they set fire to the courthouse, and much of the town had burned. Um, near Bluntville, it continued until news of the bloody battle at Chickamauga reached General Ambrose Burnside and Union General Henry Wagger Halleck ordered a retreat towards Knoxville. All right. I can say Chickamauga, but I can't say artillery. You can say Ambrose Burnside, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's a memorial of the Confederate soldiers here in Sullivan County. So, let's get on the road and say some more before we, your mouth is frozen so shut you can't even open it. What's this bell? I'm gonna look this bell over here. Oh yeah, I missed that. That's why you're here. I miss half of the, I get people <laughs> so mad at me before you show in here. You didn't show the bell. This is the historic courthouse bell. It was forged in Maryland and was placed atop the old section of the Sullivan County Courthouse in 1870 and hung there a hundred years. Hmm, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting, yeah. Yeah. Let me look at the courthouse front. I see there. Yeah. What do you mean? You gonna ring it or you want me, me to do that? We probably shouldn't, should we? Probably not. I, I should like... do a lot of things though that I end up doing. I can't help it. I... That was a little bit much, wasn't it? <laughs> I really like this uh, Veterans <laughs> Memorial, too. I did not expect that. Can you hear? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh my gosh. I turn the volume way down on this video. I didn't <laughs> Dedicated to all veterans of Sullivan County. I don't know what gets into me, do you? I oh, know. It's really cool they have that fire going. I wish I could feel I a little bit of the heat from it right now. I know. It's starting to get a little bit colder. Mm. Yes. Let's get up here and look around. All right, and we're standing outside of the Old Deary Inn right now. It was built in the early 1800s, and women and children during the Battle of Bluntville actually gathered here in the cellar. You can see the cellar door there, which is pretty neat. Yeah. So they saw refuge here, and this home was constructed by William Deary. 
So it was once a trading post and a tavern, so that's pretty good. Yes. It looks like an old tavern, don't it? It looks yeah. like the tavern in Abingdon. Sure does. We'll cross the road and get a shot back over here in a minute, but mm -hmm. I wanted to read off and see a little bit of information and show you where we're at here in town. Yes. I can't wait to get to the old I like the old houses. staff that's a rock there. I mean, you don't see cool stuff like that anymore. Probably because it's not up to code, but. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good place to fall in. Yeah. Imagine a trick or treater coming here and oh, yeah. about 20 of them would treat But it's really neat to see. Yeah, it's pretty neat to see. So it's this little decoration up here. Especially on the sign, it reminds me so much of the tavern in Abingdon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that comparison. You well, think this place is haunted? Bound to be, isn't it? Yeah, it'd have to be. I keep wanting to call it the old Drury Inn, but it's not Drury. It's <laughs> very pleasant. So I, I would be lying if I said that, wouldn't I? Yeah. Okay, let's see what else is here in Bobble. All right. We'll take a back look at the old Deary Inn, too. really love that old stone building. That's neat. <laughs> and I guess that these buildings here were just the old buildings of the Deary Inn. That one right there is the old smokehouse. All right, cool. Very neat. Mm-hmm. See what else we can find. And that one is the brick kitchen. The brick um, kitchen. William Deary also built this. He built this in 1810 to serve his inn. Take a little peek in there. Okay. And last but not least, well, there's a couple more in there. Yeah. A wagon. A couple more here, but you can see that this is really big grounds. Heck yeah. This was the King Ironworks cabin. It was the office of James King Ironworks. <clears throat> so this one wasn't actually part of the original house and inn that was actually at like an office building that was moved. Oh, okay. So. <clears throat> we got this down here. And I'm guessing that these other last couple are probably the same way. This one is a granny cabin. It only has three logs per wall, which is pretty unique. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, and a punching floor. It was moved here from Hawkins County and Virginia Caldwell named it the Greeny Cabin and it is now furnished to show the roughest dwelling of early settlers. Yeah, just three. Yeah. Look how big those are. Oh, that was very cool. Love seeing that old roof too. It's neat. Yeah, we're almost finished seeing this, don't we? This is the law office. You think this is the first one? The Fane Law Office. It'd have to be right up there, wouldn't it? This little building originally stood across the street and served as the office of the attorney John Fane in the late 1800s. Some Bluntful residents remember it as the office of attorney Homer Smith in the second quarter of the 20th century. It was saved from demolition by Virginia Caldwell, who relocated it after 1948. Looks like it set up like a old little schoolhouse now yeah. or i guess that's just what they use as desk maybe but. maybe little tablets yeah but it looks like a little schoolhouse yeah <clears throat> how's your mouth holding up it's frozen <laughs> if you can spit one more out we'll get it warm up for a minute so this was the slave quarters and this was part of the Dairy Inn um, estate. It was built in the early 1800s to house the slaves. Very few original slave buildings still exist in Northeast Tennessee. Wow. The brick floor in there.
love seeing old buildings like this. I do too. They just really leave an impression on you and make you realize what history really was like, you know? I know. That's a very interesting part of town right here. Yes. painted their porches paint blue on the ceiling? I have not, to be honest with you. They did that because they said it was like the same shade of blue as the sky and that if there were any spirits that they wouldn't linger, I guess. That their places wouldn't be haunted because the ceiling was paint blue. Keep the haints away. Well. Pretty neat, right? Pretty neat. I hope it worked. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why you he was asking about it being haunted, didn't it? Maybe. That was before I saw that they had the ceiling painted. Yeah. Now it's good. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> There's some lost. But I love that old tradition. Yeah. Hate blue ceilings on the porches. Yeah, that's kind of a neat thing, just a tradition to keep even if you didn't believe it, you know. Yes, my just, porches just for... are painted blue on the ceiling oh. too. Had any haints? I just want to give you another look from here. The old Deary Inn. Yeah, the Deary Inn. And there's the other house. Ralph Blizzard, who's a musician, local musician. There's a little marker about him as well. Mm -hmm. And back that way again, the courthouse. So, And here we've hyped it up quite enough bit. So there's the Cannonball House. And I'm getting ready to show mm -hmm. why it's called that. Yes. And there is why it's called the Cannonball House. Yes. Because that's where the Cannonball went in. Yeah, right there. Which, of course, they got some putsy glass or something covering it now, but at one time, if we were sitting here at the, standing here at the wrong time in history, we would be goners right now. So. I know. Especially me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially you. I'm right in the line of it. That's fascinating. I've always wanted to check this out. I love the... Civil War history, of course. I do too. Nothing amazing. Okay, guys, we hope you enjoyed this look at Blountville, Tennessee. Yes, and if you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our adventures, and leave us a comment your favorite part. It's too cold to be cutesy today, and we just have to wrap it up. Really. Yes, let's go.